So as we proceed, as I was saying, make sure that if possible, anytime, anytime you're thinking of the partnership, go back to the course on, on partnership and go through, never be in a haste. I always say never get into a partnership under pressure. Never get into a partnership from the place of excitement. Make sure you have all the T's and the I's dotted before you venture into any form of partnership. If not, it will hurt you tomorrow. I can give you countless examples of people who are about to walk away from their startups because they end up who just say we're partners, no document at all, nothing. Partners of the mouth. Tomorrow crisis, no way to solve the crisis because there is no foundational way that you guys were working, working on. Okay, so pay attention to that. All right, so the first part of this is for us to just review the courses and then I answer questions. Any follow-up questions from the courses, the models you went through? Do you have questions that you think you need me to address regarding your business? Raise them now, because after this, I will just go to show you the practical things I want to show you, and then we end the session. We can ask questions based on the practical session. But for now, any questions from the courses, from partnerships, to financial management, to branding, to start up commandment, any questions? When you sit quiet, I conclude there's no question. Is that it? Is that the matter of the matter? Okay. If that's the matter of the matter, then it is it is good then. Yes, Mr. Summer, go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to start. Mine is on the start of financial management. Yes. I'm working and then I have a salary every month. Yes. Now with my project, so the advice I give is I create a different bank account for my, 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 my project. Then I do bootstrapping by taking money from my salary to, for, to, fund, uh, to borrow the business, to start up the business, or how do yes. I go about I look for yes. sponsors? That, that's what is recommended. Even if you are getting sponsors, your sponsor, the money for that sponsors need to be on a separate bank account, not your personal bank account. You can see create a bank account in your name in a different bank, but you know that you disappear yourself and know that this bank account is strictly for business. But if the business is registered or the project is registered or the bank, a bank can accept you to create a project account without, a, without asking you for lecker documents whether the project is registered or not. Good, go ahead and create an account in the name of that project. If not, that's what I do personally. When I want to start a new business, I go to a different bank totally. I create a different bank account. You could see if, if the project is not registered or is not legally registered, I create an account in my name. I all the transaction for that particular project goes to that particular account and I don't touch it for my personal use. I, after all, my, my mind is a business account, not in my personal account, so I don't even go there. Or if you are bootstrapping, I create the account, I move it from different accounts, put it in that account, and it becomes the capital of the new project. It's very important for your accountability and discipline. Okay. Good. No, thanks. Yes. Any, that any other question? Awesome. Any other question? No, on partnership, I, I was clarified because uh, I can reach a company now without requiring any partner as, as, as a sole provider, sole proprietor. Okay. So that excellent. is sold out. Yes, excellent. So you can always start as a sole proprietor, and then maybe in the long run, you can now, if you want to bring partners, you can now convert it to a partnership company and so on but it's good you can start as a single person, then in the long run, you can bring in partners. Okay, good. Yes, Mr. Njofi, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So um, looking at the financial management, 
I wanted to ask something uh, concerning um, income transparency. Yeah. Transparency with team members is it? Yes. Is it something that you have to let all your team members know about your revenue, or you reserve that to yourself or just to some team members? No, 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 no. They must. It's not a public information. It's a. It's a private limited liability company now. It's a private company. It's not a public company where you have to communicate everything to everybody. Some, sometimes in a company, just the accountant knows and you know because the accountant knows because they work on the report. You understand? Okay. No. Yes, it's confidential information that is just for you, for management eyes. If there's a board of directors, that information is only for the management team and the board. If it's like your, if it's like a startup like yours, the information is just for you and the accountant. If you have an accountant, if not, basically it's just for you, you because you are the one making the financial decisions, analysis, and all of that. What the team expect is pay pay my salary, as simple as that, right? What they expect is make money available for working capital for operations. That's all. That that's the, that's their biggest headache. Apart from that, the rest is you. It stays with you. Okay, no. So please yes. follow our question. Even Except to, it's a discretion that you want to share with them. That's that's your discretion if you want, but it's not legally. It's not legally advised or even business wise advised. So you should make that okay, information. No. Even even let's say somebody, your manager. Yes, go ahead. There's some noise in your background. I stood there. Anybody else with a question as we? Move yes, forward. Good evening. Yes, Rama, go ahead. Good evening to everybody. And thank you very much for the session. Um, but I wanted to ask that, what if you started quite fine with your co-founder and mm -hmm. then started, like, the co-founder started acting here, he and these are like, it's a whole different character now. How do you act with that? Without the whole, you do not have the documents and stuff like that. How do you mm -hmm. talk about things now? Yeah, so you see, it was already wrong. So any any business plan like that will always have issues at the end. It will always have issues at the end. So in that kind of situation, the only way is to settle it and make it be. Either the person who is still concerned with the business, either you decide and you pay off the co-founder, if they're confident at the beginning, of course, so you can decide and pay off the co-founder. So, okay, you know what? Since you are not serious and you are not coming to this business, Okay, for home and common agreement, I pay you back your capital that you invested. Or if you cannot pay the co-founder um, upfront, you guys can sign an agreement and they, you, you say, okay, you know what? You, we're we're going to sign a new agreement. And the agreement is you're going to move away from the business. You will stop being an active model of business. You stop being a co-founder and all of that. And then the capital you contributed, I will pay the capital back to you instrumentally in the next six months or one year. So you need you guys need to come to a compromise agreement, then make it legal, and then you push them aside because you there's no business as co-founders if both team members are not working hard at the same level. Commitment, all of that is not the same. Then there's really no business. One will always get angry at the other. That's the so it's only a makeable settlement here. You come to an agreement, you make it formal, and then you move your separate way. Okay. Okay. Understood. Or yes. you get angry too and abandon the business and start a different one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and some people also do. But it all depends. Uh -huh. You only abandon depending on uh, on how much you have invested in the business, you know? Invested. Because if the person was already behaving weird, meanwhile you have invested more time, more resources, more energy, 
more money, you have invested everything more. So you start thinking of what the sleepless nights and the money you have lost. They're like, no, you cannot just leave this go mm-hmm. like that. So you better decide, okay, you know what? And if you believe in the business and it has potentials, you prefer to pay them off based on what they invested because you only pay them what they invested really because they are not really working hard on the business. So you're not paying them for goodwill or energy or whatever or time because if they're not being serious, there's nothing you're paying them for, right? Yeah, so you can mm-hmm. do that. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Awesome. Any other question before we get into the next, uh, to the next phase? Yes, Wilson, go ahead. Okay, so sorry, I, I, I got, I have to, to deal with the noise issue before I get back. Yes, right, yes, go ahead. So, so I wanted to ask, um, so is the management, let me say you have a manager, uh-huh. somebody who, who leads a segment of the team. Are those people supposed to know the financial, the financial details? Because a lot of the time, all the the aspect of transparency might be important. And I just wanted to clarify if my, my assumption is, is correct. Number one, it depends on, on the structure of your management team. Who makes up your management team? Let's start from there. Who makes up your management team? Um, someone, someone I put in there. What's that person's role? Who, what, like, what are they doing, really? What's okay, their role? So, okay, to 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 work on uh, this, that is to, to manage the team, so to say, like distribute task, uh, uh, manage project, yes, like work like project so, management. So, so how do you call them? Are they are they like program manager, project manager, operations manager? Who are they to the company? Just uh, what's their position? Yeah, operations. Operations, okay. Secondly, do you have a management meeting timeline with these people, with this person? Do you guys have like a time, you do you have like monthly management meeting? Well, it, it's, it's not specific, uh, no specific. Uh, uh, okay. But when need okay. arises, I can say when need arises. Okay, that's fine. Last question. When you guys are having meetings from your own end, what is always the top of the agenda you want to discuss with them? Mostly about optimizing, fixing any anything that wasn't done right, and better strategies to to, to manage the team. I, I don't even think the, the money part has been an issue, but. I just want, I just felt I should clarify this point of because yeah, so that's that's why I'm taking you there because that's that that's that's why I'm walking you through all these questions because the validity or the quality of any management meeting is driven by these questions. If you don't, if they are not clearly communicated, I don't know the why, then you can only have an answer to the question you ask. Right? Because a management team is made up of top leaders in an organization. Let's say you have a chief accountant, operations manager, human resource manager, they make up the management team. Then the second question I ask you, now, when you guys meet, do you guys meet on a Monday basis? Because management team should have a timetable of meetings. If it's really a management team, there should be a constant time, either at the beginning or beginning of the month, at the end of the month, that excluding there's always extraordinary meeting or impromptu meetings. Just what should in case there's something on ground that needs immediate uh, a discussion and decision making, right? That that's there, like what you said, that you guys just made when needs arises. Apart from that, if it's really a serious management team, there should be a constant monthly meeting and this monthly meeting they should be top on the agenda on this meeting is it operations is it team management is it reviewing expenses is it reviewing income so if reviewing financial statements is part of your top agenda for the management meeting then you have to inform them you have to involve them in the uh, that person in, in to, to see the financial statements but then if financial analysis or financial review 
is not top of the agenda with their management team but when you guys admit it then they, they, they are they, they are not supposed to see but mostly mostly when it comes to management meeting focus is always on operations you understand focus yeah. is always on operations and all of that then at your level at the founder's level at the ceo's level you are not the one who decide okay these operations need to be done so how much needs to be disbursed for these operations here and there Oh, you have a board of directors, you now take that to the board of directors because of <laughs> all board of directors have access to the financial statements. That is why most management meetings always happen uh, uh, be sometimes after the board or before the board because they need to bring suggested, recommended uh, 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 operations to the board of final approval and here and there. Okay, so it goes back to you. Do you guys want to make financial discussion and reviews as one of your top key agendas during your meetings? Then fine. Then you need to involve them. If not, they are not involved. Simple. Okay. No. Th thank you very much. Now, uh, this also goes to one thing. As yeah. a business that in a team of, uh, let's say six, yes, yeah, six, is it, mm -hmm. is it wise to to delegate things like invoicing and all those documents that go with money. Now, in that, here again, you come back to uh, um, to the rules. What are the rules that so you delegate according to rules? Team of six years. Who is responsible for what? That's the first foundation. So, whoever is responsible for cash, for example, or the finance officer should be responsible for everything concerning cash movement. You understand? Yes, sir. So, yeah, so you need, to, you, need to, you need to narrow that down to a person. Or you can say, okay, you know what? Invoice issuing is the job of the customer service officer. So like invoice example, it, it is either done by customer service officer or the person in charge of finance. So you have a team of six. You need to break down the rules and create job description for all the rules. Then this question you're asking will automatically disappear because then, okay, in this department, this person is responsible, this one responsible, this one responsible. Understood? Yes, well, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Yes, Mr. Desmond. Okay, Doc. Good evening to everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, I wish you asked a question on, you said we shouldn't focus on competition. I think in lesson two, or is it on the third lesson? Mm -hmm. Yes, that we be careful we are on competition. But now, this, this, is, a, this is a question and uh, um, this is a worry I have. I have a doctor yeah. which I was in partnership with and I saw the idea of my mobile ultrasound and also giving out um, the, the that is giving a, a subsidized price. And mm -hmm. now he was a person sending me three quarter of my of the patients. And now <laughs> he bought the idea and implemented and started something with, my, with the idea I sold to him since we we're in partnership. Okay. Now, now, how do you deal with because now it's it's, it's, it's somehow competitive because he opened his own place just should I say two hundred meters away from me and how do you do such a uh, competition? Now, because he has opened his own place, doesn't mean he has taken customers away from you. It doesn't mean that all the customers will come to him. Your job is. When you focus on compete, when you focus on on competing or performing better than the next company around you, you instead lose because you are not focusing on customers and on attracting customers. I asked a question in a training session to some executive, and I said, "Why do people innovate? Why do you innovate? Why do you improve on your business? Do you improve on your business so that you can perform better than your competitor, or so you can serve customers better and get more customers?" Which one do you think is the purpose of innovation? The, the latter. Good. So now, and one thing about, I don't like about competition is 
sometimes there are many people who are stressed over computation and they don't direct their energy and resources doing what they should be doing. Look, at, I can operate with somebody in, in the same business, in the same building, and you would never give me a sleep. Uh, you, never, you, you never take away my sleep. You know why? Because you are, you are the least of my problems. Your major problem should be, how do you upgrade your own business? How do you upgrade your services? How do you upgrade your operation, everything, up to how you brand your business and express your marketing and get the customer? Customers don't go to your competition for going set. No, they go to where they know that they can solve their problem. That's the funny thing. People think that because someone has opened a business around you, they're going to take your customers. No, they take your customers maybe because you are, you, you are not that good. And nobody can take all customers. You understand? So even if he yeah. opens in the same building with you, retell your focus on how do I brand better? How do I generate more leads better? How do I do marketing much better? Marketing means how do I make more people to know about my clinic so they can come only to me? You forget about the other person. Let them do whatever they're doing. And, you, and when you are doing that so well, you are instead the one giving them sleepless nights. You understand? So yes, that's not competition, actually. That's not your problem. It is your problem when you focus on it. My question to you is, how are you perfecting your market? How are you generating more leads and making people see that you are the best place they can come to when they have a problem? How are you ensuring that your internal operations are so seamless and effective that when a client comes into your premises, they enjoy the service you get? That is where you make the money. So you innovate to serve customers better and generate more leads. You don't innovate so you can beat the company A or company B. So retail your focus and focus on you, your market, and getting more customers to come to you, and you will succeed. Okay, Doc, thank you. I, I actually did something on that. Uh, Good. Because now, now I've rescheduled, I've, I've gone into what they call now mobile ultrasound, where uh -huh. uh, I visit mostly uh, health centers in the villages where pregnant women who don't have an opportunity to come to town because of transport to come and do ultrasound. Now, Excellent. Them this. So I just wanted to get an insight on how to handle this, this um, the, the other issue, because it was like a major partner and we lost, we lost some money for the time being. Uh -huh. So I had to strategize. No, it's okay. If, if we decide to walk, walk away, and you know, again, that's where partnership comes in if it's not done properly well, okay? But if you decide to walk away, always focus on the business. That should be the primary objective. Focus on perfecting the business. That's how you win. And again, I mean, I work with so many clients like that, they do that, and then at the end, the partner is jealous again, who left? So focus on the business. Like this mobile ultrasound, good. Make it more effective. Invest more in that. Imagine if you can go to villages, bring, let's say, I don't know wherever you're going, bring, let's say, uh, 1,000 flyers to a village, go to villages, bring church announcements and send to the churches, announce to the churches that, okay, this village, every Monday we come to this village from 3 p.m. to this. You, imagine you have five villages and they know all their days where you are coming and in each village you have done announcement in all churches, you have shared at least 2,000 flyers, even black and white, no problem. That, that, that should be your focus. You see, you are beating... You, 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 you are getting more customers, more leads, you are building a better brand and, and penetrating the market more. You don't even have time whether they, that your, your, your neighbor computer is sleeping or is not. That's not your problem. Your problem is how are you perfecting your art in business? That should always be your, that, that, that is the 100% preoccupation of any serious entrepreneur. Okay, good. Claire, thank you. Thank you, Dawson. Awesome. Okay, any last question? As I said, part A is just to answer questions, then we go to what I want to show you on other stuff, and we are good to go. Okay, let me ask a question. Who is 
Who is planning to raise external capital? You want to raise external capital for your startup? You, or you are in a state, let's say maybe you plan someday to raise capital or you are in a state now where you need external capital. Let me know. If you have not decided, you can write, I have not decided. It's okay. Okay, Verma is planning. Mercy, you are planning to raise, you want to raise capital now or you raise in the future? Okay, Quinta is planning. Okay. Now, okay, good. Now let's let's get into that. Hear this and hear me very well. The most difficult thing to do when you want to raise capital is becoming ready, what they call funding ready. That is always the most difficult thing. And sometimes becoming funding ready can take you a year to prepare, especially if you started on the wrong footing. The first foundational document that you need to always have ready as you get ready to raise capital is your monthly report and your annual report. So for example, if you are here and your business is more than one year old and you are planning to raise capital now or tomorrow, one of the first conditions, documents that makes you funding ready is your monthly report or your annual report. So if you have been in business for three years, you should have three annual reports. There's no particular format. See, many in, not many, all investors, they, they, they are never looking for perfect startupers because they know. They just need startupers who have some basic data they can look at. Your monthly report can just be two pages. Page one can just be the activities you have done. Page two talks about your finances and your finances are simple. This is what you made as sales. This is what you made as expenses. This is the profit or the loss for the month. Simple. Just enough data that somebody can look at and have a sense of your business. If you are, if you are, if you are here and your business is more than one year old and you have monthly reports for the previous month, and for immediate last year indicated. Because even if I connect the investors now, that will, that will be the second or the first document they will ask you to send. Because they will need, they, one of the major things that investors look for is your track record. And under your report, can they see and see your track record? Not only track record whether you're making money or not. No, track record of operations. Track record of what you have done. That's why, that's, that's why most investors ask, what have you done so far? Not how much are you, how much have you made? How much do you have in your bank account? That's always coming like towards the middle of the discussion. Okay. Okay, good. So make sure you are keeping your report, monthly reports. And then at the end of the year, combine the report and form one annual report. Let's say like Desmond, for example, his report must have total number of outreaches, total number of public health events they have done, how many people they have reached, total number of staff, total number of, uh, of, 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 of sales they have made or payments, registration, whatever, expenses, all of that, they are very important. Very important. Okay? So those things are very important. So please make sure you have your report because they can ask at any time. Sometimes when investors ask, 
can you send us report for the last three months? Send us report for your last three months. Okay. So it is it is important to pay attention to that. So please, please make sure you are documenting. And I always recommend make sure all your reports are stored in a hard drive, in, a, in an online drive. I prefer you write reports on Google Docs because Google Docs automatically save for you. Or you can write them in Microsoft and then upload them on your Google Drive so that it's safe always because you can need it at any time. If you're talking with a, a potential investor online on WhatsApp, on, 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 on Zoom, or on email, you just go download and send to them if they need it, okay? That is very important. Number two, the second document that any serious entrepreneur must prepare and have it ready is what you can call pitch deck. Sorry, not pitch deck yet. Is what you can call a one pager. It's called a one pager. Where's this sample of mine that I kept somewhere to show you? It's called a one pager. Just give me a moment. Da, 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 da. I thought I opened that document here to present. One pager is very important. And then one thing that accompanies the one pager is is the document that talks about you, the entrepreneur. Have a document that talks about you, the entrepreneur. Okay, very important. So here's what I mean. So there's a one pager and there's a document that you have that carries your full profile as an entrepreneur, very, very important. So here's what I'm talking about. Because there is no investor that will ever invest in business without knowing more about you. So I have a document like this. This is my own document. This is on my Google Drive. You see profile, Javni Joybert. More information about Javni Joybert. So this is where it has, because investors like to know all the core things about you that they want to know. Okay, like you see mine, it's like four pages because I've documented every important thing that I think anybody who is serious about working with me, either investing in me or partnering with me, they will need to know, okay? So if you don't have a document that somebody can read and know you detailly, know your experience, know your skills, know your achievements, know your vision, know all of these things, know where you went to school, please go and develop it after this and keep it is one of your most important documents. This is not your CV. Also have a CV, yes, but have a full profile. Your CV does not contain some of the important things that a serious investor, and investor likes to know you beyond the balance sheet. An investor likes to know you beyond the, 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 the figures and the numbers you have presented in your pitch deck. Sometimes you say an investor asks you, tell me, how did you grow up? Tell me about your faith. Tell me about your values that you live by. Investors like to know things that make you a human being. Are you the kind of human being that he can trust or she can trust as an investor? Anybody has a document that talks about yourself? A full profile of yourself? Anybody? Or who will have to go and develop the document today, later today? Who have to go and work on that today? Who will have to go and work on that document today? No, I have a question. What about yes. um, your um about the news? The what you wrote about? Can you just state something like that? Sorry. 
there's um, this thing we um, about the me your profile there. I'm not talking about yours. I'm talking about generally. Can you just duplicate what you have on the page? And probably it, add what is necessary. It, it, yes, if it has again, it needs to have all the information that is critical about you, your experience, your career, your skills, everything about you. Yeah. And some, yeah, so as long as it has again, as I said, everything about you that's relevant to your career, where you're going, your business, every, where you have worked, your schools, everything that an investor must know to see whether you can be trustworthy or not, credible or not, you can get the work done or not. Okay, so wherever you're getting it. It's not a problem, but does it contain everything that is relevant? That's what matters. Understood? Yes, though. Okay. All right. So those who don't have one work on it is very important. Okay. So the next document, I, I opened this document and I kept to present to you guys, is what I call the one pager. A one pager is a document now, it's like the about for your business, it's the about for your startup. It's the about for your startup. It clearly explains, this, this, is, a doc, this is a one page document or a maximum two page document where anybody who holds that document they, will, they can see the vision, your vision statement, they see your mission statement, they see your core objectives, and they see what you have achieved since you started existing. Three, four major things. In maximum two pages, I want to show you our own. I don't know where. Um, just give me a moment. Let's see. Too much documentation. Oh, wow. Okay, good, got it. So, so I've mentioned reports. I have mentioned a full profile about yourself. And then now we are talking about See, many people go in front of investors and, and they don't get the investor's attention because they go just with their mouths and grammar. Please never go, oh, so some people send emails to investors and they send on their grammar. It's different when you approach an investor and you send data. Imagine you're an investor. And somebody reaching out to you for the first time. In that email, in that email, you will find uh, 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 you may not send reports at first. In that email, you find a full profile about the person reaching out to you. Number two, you find a one-pager document about the business they're introducing to you. And it is the one-pager document that makes an investor to decide whether to continue the discussion or not. That's why your one-pager document is very important. Here's an example of one of our one-pager documents, which we upgraded. Oh. Now, this is it. This is a one-pager document. As I said, it's maximum two pages. Okay? Follow this carefully. This is, this is an old one, but it's the same format. the same format because we have upgraded, we changed the logo of this business and all of that. Now, the one-pager... You can start by having the logo of your business at the top right, top left, or in the middle. Me, I like to put it at the top left. That's my decision. You must not do it that way. So you can put the logo at that. Then you can put the name of the business in the top middle, whatever you want to do, no problem. You can even do it in your letter head if you want to do, no problem. Okay? But this is it. Then the first paragraph is about us. A five line or less description of about your business. It should be very specific and clearly done, okay? Now, the second paragraph should be the problem statement. This way you communicate the problem that your business is trying to address in not more than five lines. If it can be even two lines, the better. Three lines, good. 
okay? Then your vision for the business. What is your vision for the business? Where do you want to see this business go? After that, the next paragraph should be your mission. What is your mission as a business? Then what are the core values that drive the business? What are the core values that you live by? These are things that investors like to see. After that, you talk about your objective. What are your, if you like, you can divide it to long-term objective and short-term objective, if you want to do that. Then lastly, the most important should be your track record. What have you achieved so far? Then this when numbers come in, you need to use a lot of numbers here. Okay, then contacts, very important. If you have a website, you put it, email, you put it, and then of course, telephone number, you put it, you put the name of the contact person. So that they send an email, they just address you directly to your first name. Okay, and then you'd like to add your logo here, as simple as that. So this is what is called a one pager. You see his name, one pager here. So you need to go and create time and do the one pager. Again, the one pager has the following paragraphs about us, where you do a brief introduction, you state the problem statement, your vision, your mission, your core values, your objective, your track record, and then your contact. It should not be more than two pages. If you can even do all of this in one page, the better. In one page, the better. But mostly it's always two pages. And in less than five minutes, an investor can like your idea or not. Okay, so you need to work on this. I wanna tell you from my experience, when you reach out to an investor, an investor that receives an email from a startup and the email contains, let's say you have last year's annual report. You can decide and remove some confidential information from there. Because you can remove some, some financial profit from there and just leave like general sales. It's okay. You can just put general sales in there and you can remove the balance sheet and the profit. That, since you know that since you guys are not close yet, you cannot discuss any information. Go ahead and do that. Okay? It's totally fine. So, but if you are reaching out to an investor for the first time, there's annual report for last year, or there's a combined report for the last three months. Number two, there's a full profile of yourself. And number three, there's a one page. You have 80% chance that you will get a reply from that investor. And do you know, do you guys know something? I was reading a research and it says somewhere that 90% of startup entrepreneurs who reach out to investors for investment don't reach out the right way. They always reach out with the wrong information, the wrong email, or with inadequate approach. 90% of startup entrepreneurs reach out to investors with inadequate approach. Do you know why? Many of them do not have any of these documents. If I start doing a research now, you you know you are going to confirm that you do not know that for you to reach out to an investor, you have to reach out all of these documents, right? So, so you need to go and work on your one page. Okay, you need to go and work on your one page. Who's going to work on the one pager today? Who's going to work on that one? I need I need to get feedback from you guys. Who's going to work on the one pager today? Who has one and you would like to share for those to be? You have one, Oben, can you share? Yes, share your screen. 
Let me authorize you to share your screen so we can do a quick review and advice when needed. Can you share your screen? Is it possible? So that we can do a quick review and others can, so that we can see this because they might not be really the same, but this is the format, okay? They might not be the same uh, because different industries is better. This finance, you also be healthcare, so you can give more elaborate um, concepts for it. But those who don't have, please go and work on it. And then you will see how your discussion from investors can change when you have this document. Right. All right, good. So while uh, uh, this one is searching, anybody has a question from the three documents I've shared so far, raise it now. Let me address it before we proceed. Anybody has a question? Have a question, you can raise it now. Let me address it before we proceed. Yes, Mr. Saman, go ahead. Yes, Doc, you said uh, I must first start with an introduction, then a problem statement that is five lines, vision, mission, core values. So when yes. you said introduction, how, how can it look like? Introduction, I share so my the introduction should be the general overview of the whole project. This is it, yes. This is it, right? This is a sample here. It's a social enterprise, subsidiary of this, which is you are introducing what is the business about. Okay, you are still you are trying to give a summary of what your business is about in five lines or less. You get a you get a concept. Okay. Because every business must be you can describe every yes. business. Let us say, let us say that you, you, you run a primary school. Okay. Tell us about the primary school. Okay. The primary school, you give the name. Uh, um, Seed of Wisdom International is a primary school located in the heart of the city, targeting busy corporate executives uh, to, to, to enable to provide a conducive learning safe environment for their kids while they are busy at work by providing them with top class curriculum to enable them. You see, you just describe every, every business must have a good description of what it stands for and all of that. Okay. okay. And of course, one thing about the about us is that it, 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 it combines a sub of a bit of the mission, bit of the vision, bit of the problem, bit of this, 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 and then boom, you can form the general direction of the business. Okay. Okay, good. Yes, definitely. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Can I go ahead to just give some highlights about what I've shared, sir? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I just prepared this because I just had in mind that maybe sooner or later I have an investor. So 
We're talking about Discovery Modagladis Medical Foundation and the mobile ultrasound device. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about this is my profile. Um, the first thing talks about who am I? I'm Oben Desmond, certified senior nurse. Specialty in reproductive health advocacy and also a consultant. <clears throat> and then the second part talks about the foundation, which is a non denominational, uh, denominational non governmental organization founded in August 2020. We finally went operational in August 2022 after, after being authorized in March 2022. And then this one goes to what we have done so far. Um, so far, we have been able to carry out two successful projects. The first was on Sisha smoking in June 2022. And then the aim of the project was to synthesize the use on the effect of Shisha. Mm -hmm. And then the second one was um, during the cholera outbreak, where we went to churches, did sensitization, and also distributed um, um, aqua taps during the cholera outbreak uh, in March 2022. Um, this one also talks, then it talks about the services we offer, community sensitization, mobile ultrasound services, diagnostic laboratory, reproductive health, counseling and family planning. It talks about our, the major priority at the moment, which is to be able to reach out to all rural health, to all rural health centers where ultrasound is lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also who, are, who is our audience, you know, the youth and the elderly, pregnant women and women of childbearing age. And also has um, where you can reach me through my Facebook profile. And also we have the mobile ultrasound device, which is one of the main things that we are doing. Yeah. But yeah. it's more than, it's about seven pages. <laughs> I didn't know it's, it's just supposed to be summarized. Yes, good. So you're gonna, it's, it's okay to, to still have the, you can have the long one, but of course, uh, and and most of this, you're gonna move it move some to your pitch deck, because part of what you have said here is you should be in the pitch deck. But this is good. So just go now and summarize that and bring it down to one page. Bring it, I mean two pages, like the one page I have shown you. So make it look nice, make it look neat. Do you have a logo or a letterhead for for your business? Yes, sir, we have. Okay, good. Create one. So make it look neat, very nice, and then two pages. Still keep this one, should in case you will need it, and so on. Okay, but this is good. This is good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now let us get into the pitch deck, and um, let me see. So. When it comes to investor readiness, your pitch deck is one of the most important documents that you must have. One of the most important documents that you must always have. Because without a pitch deck, you will find it difficult to actually create um, the right attention, okay? Especially when you're talking to an investor or to a partner. Now, I'm gonna share this pitch deck by uh, Airbnb. I'm sure we know about Airbnb. Airbnb is um, it's a platform where you can rent people's houses. It's very popular here in the, in the US, Europe, in South Africa, and so on, North Africa. So let's say you have, uh, their model is very simple and powerful. Let's say you're renting a three bedroom house and you live only, in, you sleep only in one bedroom and all of that. So you can decide and put your other two bedrooms uh, um, on rent on A, B, and B. Somebody comes and pay you. Somebody is in town for two, three days conference instead of sleeping in a hotel. They, 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 they rent your room for you and sleep in the hotel, sleep in your room, pay, pay, pay and be through you, pay you through Airbnb platform, you make money, you pay a percentage to Airbnb and, and so on. Uh, sec security reasons, Airbnb will do it best to make sure that the person is checked 
uh, background check and all of that to avoid you, uh, you know, having a criminal in your house. So people, when they're traveling for holidays, they put their house on Airbnb and so on and so forth, you see? Yeah. So that's the concept of Airbnb. A lot of people use it a lot because sometimes it's cheaper than hotels and more affordable uh, uh, for that to, to happen. So, so it is important to know that. All right, so with that done, um, so this is the pitch deck. One thing about a pitch deck that you need to understand is a pitch deck should be very beautiful. And a good pitch deck should carry the colors of your business, the color of your brand. Understood? And the first page of your pitch deck should try to represent your business as much as possible, right? That's why you see there's a laptop here. It's an online business, all of that. So they're trying to, because you need to use a short time sometimes less than five minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes to convince an investor about your business. Because when you email a pitch deck or you're presenting it live, you have less time to get the attention of the investor. That's why most people get experts to work on their pitch deck it to be as beautiful as possible. You need to get somebody who's very good with PowerPoint design to do it for you. I'm emphasizing on this. Never go and send a funny pitch looking deck to somebody, it, 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 it needs to be so beautiful that they are, they, are, they are eager to go through it. That's the concept. Make somebody to be to enjoy going through your pitch deck. You get the point? Good. So the first slide, you can put your logo, your business name, and all of that, you're good to go. And the pitch deck is always recommended that it should not be more than 10 slides, actually. It should not be more than 10 slides, maximum 15 slides, and so on. So uh, but these 19 slides, no, no, no problem. It depends also where you're presenting it. And they sometimes they give it, let you know the time that you have to do the presentation. Okay, good. So um, sometimes for some people, they merge slide one and slide two. Yeah, it's possible you can merge slide one and slide two, or you remove slide one totally in slide two. You just put your logo, all of that. And then you put this like, you see, this picture is trying to demonstrate what they are selling. Because what they are selling is a platform where people can put their free rooms on rent for people to rent and sleep in for a few days and then continue their work. I'm going to get the concept. Yeah, so that is it. So you see like here, your first, your first slide could be this. Pitch deck, book room, with lockers rather than hotel. And you need to make sure that you are very, your words are very specific. Pitch deck is not for you to go and write composition. It's not for you to go and write essays. You're gonna see here, pitch deck is not for essay writing, please. When you are presenting a pitch deck, somebody should go through it in a few minutes and know what you're talking about. You see, this is a pitch deck, simple. Book room with lockers rather than hotels. And that's why the room is here. The logo is here. Simple. You see? Very straight to the point. Let's say it's Desmond. Desmond can put his logo here and, and just write um, affordable healthcare to locals in the community of Douala. And then he puts pictures, a picture of a nurse here, and maybe standing in the world or in a pharmacy, wherever, and somebody can see that understand. Then the next one is the problem. You see how specific it is? It's called PowerPoint. PowerPoint means you indicate on the key point. A slide should contain just 20% of what you will say. 80% should come inside of you. 80% should come from your mind, from your brain, okay? The next most important slide is what? The problem. Are you seeing that? The problem. The problem. So here, you see, there are certain three problems here. So Airbnb is trying to solve these three problems. Price is an important concern for a customer booking travel online. Hotels leave you disconnected from the city and its culture. Because some hotels are located outside of the city because of the largeness or whatever. No easy way exists to book a room with a local or become a host. 
right? That's the problem. You state your problem very specific. Then after that, you go to the solution. What's the solution? A web platform, an online platform, where users can rent out their space to host travelers. To do what? Host travelers to save money when traveling, make money when hosting, share culture, local connections to the city. That's the solution. You save money because you, you're going to pay a cheaper house instead of a hotel, while the person giving that the house makes money to target customers here. And then share culture. Because if you're renting a house in the heart of the city, you get to see the city, you get to eat in restaurants here and there, you, you, you immerse yourself in the culture. After that, market validation. Market validation. So you need to show data to prove that the market exists. You need to show data. So you see these are showing their own data. Let's say for this month, this one can pick data from World Health Organization. And the data states that, uh, according to World Health Organization in Cameroon, one doctor is, is to 10,000 patients. One government doctor is, is to 10,000 patients. So one doctor will need to serve at least 10,000 patients. So inadequate access to medical personnel. He can now use that data now to validate his market, why his clinic is important for the market. Or, con or, or convince the investor that, look, we have the available market. You prove the look for data sources and prove that, okay? Then market share. Market share, you need to look for data sources to confirm that the market share is there. You see what they're doing here? Trips book online worldwide, total available market, serviceable market, trips versus Airbnb and all of that. You look, you talk about the market size. You can also say, okay, look, in, in the city of Douala or oh here, yeah, uh, this number of people are not able to have access to good quality healthcare because of this disease. You state the numbers and you're good to go, okay? Then the product, the product where you are describing the product itself. That's why you see product here. You are describing the product itself. You break down the product. Maybe this, if let's say, let's for example, you can talk about what? You can talk about maybe um, here he provides consultation. There's a pharmacy, there's a delivery room, there's a, there's a, a, a word for admission, all of that. He, he described the products properly. That's what you do here. Okay, so these three slides are talking about the product. So here you clearly describe your product. Okay, then. The most important slide, which is always the favorite slide of the investor is your business model. How do you make money? How do you make money? You see, their business model is, we take a 10% commission on each transaction. Very straight to the point. When a traveler rents a house from our platform, and pays, we cut 10%, simple. Then you can give further data. So let's say if it's this month, how do you make money? Okay, we make money from consultation fee, we make money from admission fee, selling drugs, mobile or transfer consultation, all of it. You can now list all of that because you make money from diverse ways, okay? This is just one way commission on each transaction, okay? Very important. When you have done that, the next is the market adoption. Who are those who are gonna buy, okay? Who are those who are gonna to adopt to the market? You see here the listing events, partnerships, all of that, correct list, okay? So yours could be, you know what? Market, who are gonna adopt the market? Or, you know, people who are sick and don't want to go to big hospitals, you know, students in a student area or, uh, uh, um, you know, middle class community, lower class, who cannot afford standard health care, they can come to you. You just you just indicate who are those who can adopt or consume your products. Then, of course, you talk about competition. You see, they are listing their competition here. 
uh, 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 all of that. So you can list a competition. Uh, just people who are in the similar business with you, who are those who are in the similar business with you, you outline them in the same area and you're good to go. And then what is your competitive advantage? What is that thing that you do easily that the guys in the same business where you cannot do? But much that, apart from them, what is that thing that you have that can make you compete better and serve your clients better? Let us say you have better machines. Let's say you have, a, you have new machines. That could be a complete advantage. Let us say that you have excellent employees, competitive, dedicated, passionate employees. That could be your competitive advantage. Okay, so you outline what are those things that makes you uh, that, that 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 can give you a higher chance of success in this business. Okay, and then of course, never do a pitch deck without a team. Never do a pitch deck without talking about yourself and the team. No investor will invest in a business when they don't they are not sure that. They have the if the startup has a team in place to make the business work. That's why team is very important. Speak all of this grammar you are speaking. If you cannot convince the investor that you, the founder, talking, <clears throat> you are competent enough to get the work done, and you have a competent team that is dedicated you will not convince the founder because you will not convince the investor. Every, all serious investors know that the rise and fall of every business depends on the team. So never skip your pitch deck. Never skip the team in your pitch deck. Okay? And then you can talk about the press. Let's say if you have done if you, have, if you have been profiled by bloggers, you have, you have been featured on TV based on the work you do or your startup, you have been featured on the newspaper, you can put it here. On school magazine, you can put it here. Invest, let investors see that you are getting attention. But if you have not been, if you have not, it's okay. You, must not, you can remove this slide, okay? And then testimonials. This is very important. Testimonials are very important for people who are already in business, like all of you here, you already have existing businesses. You cannot do a pitch deck without testimonials on previous clients. You get it? Are you guys getting me? So you need to go back to the drawing board and do what? And collect testimonials. This month, if you have treated patients, go and collect testimonials from them. If patients, if you have if you have gone to those houses and you have done mobile consultation, take testimonials from them. Take a picture if they ask for their permission, of course, please take a picture and put it there. It's very important. After testimonials now is where you now do the financial data. We you talk about your finances. For example, here, you can talk about how much you have made already and how much you are asking for an investment. You can now say, okay, in the last 12 months, we have made 1 million francs in total sales. And right now, we are looking for extra 2 million francs in investments so we can scale our business and when we scale the business with this investment, we'll be able to triple our sales and profit by three or by four, whatever that you're talking about, you indicate. So you end with financial data and then the ask. You end with financial, suppose separate the, the two. One of the financial slides talks about the track record of finances. Then the other record. The other slide talks about how much you need from investors and what you will do with it. Don't just say, I need 10 million francs investment. What will you do with it? Break down the 10 million francs and explain to investors how you will use it. You can say, okay, you know what? Um, I need 10 million francs 
with this 10 million francs, 10% will go to marketing, 20% will go to recruiting new staff, 30% will go to buying new computers and equipment, 40% will go to renting additional space for the office, 50% will go, you divide how you will use, let them see how you use the money and how the money will contribute to making you more successful and more profitable as a business. Okay, so I will share this slide with you that you can use as a sample in the WhatsApp group. But any question about, about the pitch deck? Any question about the pitch deck? Any question about the pitch deck? I don't want to share right now before I forget. I struggle to find this. Any question about the pitch deck, raise up your hand and you can ask. Though I wish to ask the pitch okay. deck. Yes, go ahead, that's one then. Where am I can... Is it is the pitch deck the, the, the same like the lean canvas? No, 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 no. The lean canvas is a business tool that enables you. Uh, of course, you write a good pitch deck from your lean canvas, of course. But the lean canvas is mostly an internal document for your business strategy, for your business analysis, for you to yeah, strategize and create a better structure for your business, understand your business very well, let us move in part so you can execute better. But of course, you prepare a better business pitch, a better pitch from a big canvas. You prepare a better pitch from a good business plan and a business canvas. Okay, because going through your own, I realized that what I have is your pitch deck has, has some other core components that the Lean Canvas doesn't have. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. Yes. But again, remember that the pitch deck is for, is for somebody else. The pitch deck is a convincing document. It's like a negotiation tool. It's like, a, it, it's like the first foot that you put in in a conversation to get the interest of the person who has the money. Okay, and many a times the uh, uh, some serious investors, when, when if you have decided to work with you, of course they would like to see your lean canvas or to see your business model canvas to understand to understand your full business cycle. Okay, good. No. Yes, Rama, go ahead. Yeah. Um. First, we ask a couple of questions. I wanted. I want to ask before going for funding. Do you, is there a stipulated number of months the business will have been running? No. Or, no. It, it it all depends on what the investor will ask for. That's why whether you have run for two months, three months, one year, whatever, your job is to make sure you prepare all these documents. Because majority of investors, investors are always investors are like how do I call it? Investors are they bet on your future. Now, and most in, that's that's who most investors are, especially in young businesses or startups. They don't come to you because you are perfect. No, they come to you because of where you are going to. You understand? Okay. You always have that in mind. Yes, so your job that's why your job is to document what you have done so far and where you are right now. Make them see that you have something to offer, and if they partner with you. You will help them make more money and they will help you achieve your dreams. Okay, then. Good. Next thing. Okay, then um, another thing. Yes. How do you find these people? Yes, we're going to come there. Okay. But then, as I said earlier, um, finding them is not the problem. The problem is okay, are you ready for all? Do you have all of these ready? True. Okay, God, then um, from the slide, I think that was the same slide. You spoke about competition. When you're talking about competition for the pitch deck, is it like competi competition in your country or global competition? No, you start, you, are, you, you only go globally if you are global. So you talk about competition only based on, 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 on the people, on the immediate people that are in your environment. But if a global company is marketing the same thing around you, you can mention them. Okay. okay. So you're talking about that business that is selling the same thing in the in the immediate yeah. target market where you're targeting. 
Mm -hmm. So, yes. Okay. Then another thing, um, this how does this work for NGOs? Though I don't know, is it is it the same like for a business or is it for an organization or is what what works? What works? The pitch deck. How does the pitch deck for an NGO, for example, because well, NGOs have what they call impact debt because you are, you are not looking for you are not looking for for capital per se you are looking for grants. So mostly NGOs are looking for grants. Yes, NGOs are looking for capital, okay. so it is not the same. So NGOs NGOs can have what is called impact debt. We are just demonstrating in with NGOs just demonstrate the problem, your solution, and then uh, how much you are begging for. As simple as that. Okay, then. Thank you very yes. much. So, NGOs is, NGOs, NGOs is much simple because it's just, this is the problem that we want to solve. This is what we have done so far, and we need your money to do this. That, 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 that's what NGOs present, per se. That's why NGOs have what is called concept notes mostly for their projects. You present the concept of the project, concept notes. There you state, you state, uh, 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 you describe the project, you can describe the locality or the area where you want to execute the project. You cannot describe the problem in that locality. You describe the design solution. You now describe the budget that you need for that project and how much you need as external grant or don donor uh, donations from partners to make it work. And you're good to go. NGOs is more okay. it's much easier to it's much easier to convince in NGOs because if people, people are not expecting feedback for you in feedback for you in terms of profit. This is much difficult because someone is giving you money and they need you to pay back the money plus 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 profit, or you, you give you give them company company share, and then every every year you're giving them part of part of your profit. So it's more detailed and more conscious and more driven. With NGOs, they give you money and they don't forget that it's actually money. So it's not that serious. They are not that committed to it that much. Okay, okay good. Thank you. Yes, good. Yes. Another question? Okay. If there's no other question, then um, I have shared, let me see, did you successfully share? Okay, I have shared this speech that we are reviewed in the WhatsApp group. Should in case uh, you want to go, please make sure you work on it uh, uh, um, seriously. Now, okay, I wanted to show you. I want to show you one of our pitch decks. That uh, a pitch deck that we did not for the purpose of money, not for the purpose of raising money, but for the purpose of partnership. So let me show you. So you can do a pitch deck. There are some partners that you want to enter into partnership with them that you will need to present a pitch deck. So this case study is one of our projects that we have put on hold, but uh, we're working on it about two years ago. So we did this pitch deck for the purpose of partnership not to raise money, but to convince people to enter into partnership with us. So some of you may need to do that in the course of your career or business. You may need to prepare a pitch deck just to convince another business to partner with you. And in the midst of that partnership, now you are able to make money later on. You are not, you are not designing the pitch deck so you can get money and invest in your business. No, you are the pitch deck is for the purpose of partnership. So that's why you see this slide talks about the partnership. So pitch decks can also be for different purposes. It must not only be because you need investors to give you money. It all depends on who are you talking to. Who are you talking to? Okay. If you see like here, you see partnership benefits, create impact, make money, build a continental brand. You see? So that's how it is. So you also need to be agile. That's why the main aim is understand the framework, understand the why of the pitch deck. It's just a straight to the point document, which anybody can pick and they understand everything about your business from the problem 
to the solution, to the target market, to how you make money, to what you're looking for, to what you need, all of that. Well, when you have that mindset now, me, I have developed pitch decks for different kind of situations in my life, different kinds of situations. As long as it's a document that can get somebody's attention to like what you do, partner with you, give you money or invest in you, pitch deck is always the foundation that you need to use. Okay, I am going to share the one pager, but please avoid sharing that one pager with a third party because it's our private document. I didn't want to share it originally. Um, I'll see what to do. I'll try to edit and remove our name from there so it's just empty like that. But the wordings will be there, but I'll remove the business name from there. Okay, so. Um, okay, good. Any other question as we proceed to round up? Apart from me talking about how to get the investor's attention or connect you to investors, is there something that you want me to clarify you upon that I've not handled before I go to talk about investors? Yes, that's one. At least during the during the the, the, the modules, you made mention of um, posting your your stuff at least two times, maybe using your your various social media handles. Yes. Yeah, but now most of since I work with productive, right, most of most of the people I work with pregnant women and most of the people of non childbearing age, they are not really active on, on, on Facebook. And you also made mention that as a startup. Um, if you don't really have money to go do stuff like um, a radio announcements, you could share, you could share flyers. Though we have done that, but the the impact is still low. I don't know if yeah. maybe there are other alternatives you could propose. That uh, okay. Let me start with the second one. See, one thing about advertisement is it's continuous. Never see when you do advertisement there. Never consider that the impact is low, because advertisement is always direct and indirect. You can advertise today and somebody makes up their mind to buy from you one year after. Why do you think that M10 advertises every day, even though they're one of the biggest companies in Cameroon or, or, or Iran? Have you ever asked yourself like that? One thing about advertisement is consistent. You keep on improving on the strategy, you keep on improving on the ways they're doing, but never stop. Never allow, like, like, like somebody will tell me that, you know. When I, 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 like I was talking to one lady, he said, when I post and don't, I, I, I don't get likes. Are you serious? Keep posting. Your job is to post. Who told you that because somebody has not liked, they have not seen or they have not read? Even if they have not seen today, they will see tomorrow. You understand? So keep on posting. And then the first one is, the first one really, you are not posting for the target market really. Right. Sometimes you are posting so that you can, for example, there are some things you, you can post on social media this month talking about reproductive health, and you can get the attention of World Health Organization experts. And they can use a part of their research or interview in a project. You understand? So in yes, marketing, yes. of course, you need to tell her, you can tell her your marketing. If the people are not on Facebook, market where they are. If they go to churches, go and do church announcements. If they go to the market, go and share flyers in the market, go and organize rallies in the market or public shows in the market, whatever they can do to get their attention, do it. Where are they? But again, you need to be a two sided collapse. So while you're doing that in the market, how can you leverage social media to position yourself as an authority in sexual reproductive health in local communities in a way that you never know who is on social media. It could be a World Health Organization worker, United Nations worker, UNICEF worker. They can note you and then include you in their project and boom, there you go. You understand? So you don't just use social media because of the target market. You also use, like, like me personally, I have had so many opportunities, both speaking engagements, consulting and travel because of what people see me do on social media. You get the concept? So. Social media is, is like a two, three-sided, it's like, a, in short, it's an all-sided platform. It all depends on how you create the content and how you structure the content on who you're targeting. And the content can be structured in different dimensions to target different groups of people. 
Okay. Yes, though. All right. Good. Let's let's proceed now to getting uh, investors. To get to investors, I'll start from the foundation. Now, the most form of investors that people neglect is diaspora, Cameroonians in the diaspora. The highest set of people right now in Cameroon who are looking for startups to invest in are Cameroonians in the, the diaspora. This is something I did myself. There was a time I wanted to test something. I took my one pager and fish there, and I approached some Cameroonians who live in Europe and America on my Facebook. I used just my Facebook only, just my Facebook. And I sent them messages on Facebook and I informed them about that. And I sent them a Google link, a Google Drive link that has, that contain my pitch deck and drive and a one page. And I sent it, I said, I just sent that, I just started a simple, nice message. I said, and hi, I put your name and I say, I'm an entrepreneur and uh, I and we are friends, and I show you have been seen my works. If not, please, you know, I put my website and I say, currently I am looking for serious investors who want to partner with me in the work I've been doing in the last four years. If you are interested, please. This is a link which contains a more detailed information about the business and about our track record and what I've recorded. For further information, you can get me on this WhatsApp number. Guess what? 95% of all the people I reach out to reach back to me. And I know many entrepreneurs that I have worked with them who have raised investment from Cameroonians in the diaspora. And you need to be ready to do the work most of When they say they want to invest, prepare investment partnership. Get a lawyer friend. You can even get one sample from Facebook, come from Google, edit it, let you guys sign and you get into work. You need their money and they want to be part of something back at home and they want to trust you. Some of them will let to do due diligence. They'll let you send their family members to come and check you out. There's no problem. Be open for that. Okay? So that's the first way that you can leverage on that. Okay? Number two is, let me take you now to my favorite platform the platform that keeps changing my life. LinkedIn, of course. The highest number of investors, you find them on LinkedIn. The highest number of investors, you find them on LinkedIn. I'm still coming, I'm still just in the basis. You see LinkedIn, LinkedIn is super, 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 super powerful, extremely, exceptionally, marvelously, incredibly powerful. Okay? Now, you can come on LinkedIn and you like, you can type venture capitalist. And you search. How you have seen my Now, do you see this? Can you see this? Venture Capitalist Africa Invest Group. This guy is a venture capitalist and has particular interest in Africa. You see this? Entrepreneur, venture capitalist, investor. You open them, you check them out. Venture capitalist, Atem Ventures, all of that, you check them out. You come here. I'm not sharing this out of a uh, theory. I have done this myself. I have proven. I have proved. I have reached out like this out of the blue, and we start having a conversation that almost leading to investment. Before I, before I would just go my go because when I just test the process to be sure that it works. Okay, good. Is, you do not see like in less than no time, we already have three potential investors. Because these are potential investors. You can only, you can only as if they are not investors when you have sent them a message and they have not replied or they have replied you and they tell you that, hey, I am not interested. And do you know one good thing about investors? 
what they will tell the, most of them will always tell you, I am not investing now, but I've kept your contact. Sometimes months later, they will reach back to you. Oh, some have reached back to me like that. Many have reached back to me like that. Okay? Are you following? You are following? Indicate I'm following. Are you following? Let me be sure that you guys are there. Following. Good, good. Are, are you learning? Are you learning this? Are you seeing what I just showed you now? Yeah, who is no. that on LinkedIn here? Who is not on LinkedIn here at all? Or who who is that was last on LinkedIn two years ago? <laughs> LinkedIn is a gold mine. So, so many a times, what you can do is like you see with me I already we already have forty one mutual friends, so it's easier to get his attention. So I can just send him a request now. And I hope that you are seeing this. It says you can add a note. You can add a note here. Just indicate that, hey, you know, uh, um, I am an entrepreneur uh, in, in Africa, in Cameroon, and I run a startup by this, this, this. You can add a link that contains all this thing, or you can just say you would like to talk more. Just craft a good message that can get their attention, okay? If you don't want to, you can just take counsel and take set. Sometimes you can come, someone always have their emails here. You can come and click on that contact. There's no contact info. You do that. Then what I need to do is you can send a request and then wait for them to accept. When they accept, before you can send them a message. Okay? You come to this person, the same thing. She, with her, you can send her a message when you guys are not friends. You see? You send the same thing. Okay? So this is one of the most easiest and the fastest ways to get investors' attention. And let me also show you something fun. When you do that, you come on the right here. LinkedIn will also suggest other investors. You see that these are, these are more investors. Senior partner, African invest. So you can connect with them too. Venture capital, Nigerian, actually is investing. Partner, you do all of these. You connect with them and you are good to go. You send friend request and all of that. And then when they accept your friend request, when they accept your friend request, what do you do? You already have what? A message. Now, let me show you guys a magic. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Look at this last statement. Look at this last statement. DM me with your pitch deck. Have you seen that? DM yes, me with your pitch deck. So there are, there are guys actively looking for money. Okay, please hold on a moment. Okay. So you see, this is somebody, DM me with your pitch deck. And that's why I was warning you, never reach out to an investor when your pitch deck is not ready. Never, 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 never. You're going to lose opportunities. There are some of you here that when you are ready for investment, if you just go just on LinkedIn and you are serious, you can take less than three months and have more than five investors willing to give you money. See, the problem in this world right now is no money. The problem is, are you money ready? That's that's always the biggest problem right now. Are you money ready? Okay. Okay. Now, another platform, that, that's it for, 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 for. Another platform that, see, Facebook does not have a lot of investors, except Cameroonian the diaspora, who are your family members. <laughs> or friends, or guys that have met on Facebook. Yes, there are some of them there. We are looking for serial investors. The platform to go to is LinkedIn and what? Twitter. LinkedIn and Twitter. Twitter is almost the same thing that LinkedIn. You come here, you can search for venture capitalists. And see the venture capitalists. They'll start suggesting you people. 
You see, these are venture capitalists like this. You see them, these are them. You review carefully, you review, you review, you review, you review, look at, look at their profile, look at what they stand for, all of that, send them stuff. And some of them, you see their reference, their, their venture capitalist company, you click and follow, you see? You click and follow and boom, you're good to go. Let's say you wanna pick this lady, you pick her, some of them even give you their LinkedIn. You can follow, you read who they are. Uh, investing in people, ideas, experiments, and promising seed stage ventures. Very interesting uh, investor. So she can, so she can, she will happily listen to ideas, talk to you. And most investors, one thing I like about most investors is that even when they don't want to invest in you now, some of them will choose to mentor you until you are ready for them to invest in you. That's one good thing I like about investors. See, those investors don't just shut people out. No, because they know that tomorrow you can become anything. You see? So you can send them a direct message. You see? If I want to talk to the lady now, I just send a direct message to her, and I'm good to go. Right? So this is, this is one simple secret. One simple secret that many start entrepreneurs don't know. And some even know, but the challenge is they don't know how to get these people attention. And the best way to get these people attention is when you are writing them, be ready. Have your pitch deck handy. Have your one pager handy. Have your personal profile handy. Then you are good to go, okay? Then the last thing I will tell you is, and then we can round up. But I hope you have found some value in the whole program, seeing some going through the models until now. I hope you have found some value in it before I round up. I want to be sure. I hope you have found some value in it. Okay. As we round up, one thing I want to say is, one thing I want to say is, please, as you have gone through this program, know, know that you can, when you, if you have tried, I've given you the first steps of what you can do from your end. I'll also share in the group a list of eight investors and their website so that you can also keep them and reach out to them anytime that you want, okay? But I want you to know, I want to do, okay, I'm happy to see that some so, so much, many things that they didn't know before, now they know. All right, good, go through them and trust me. See, and, see let me tell you something. I'm one of those who believe that any business can become a great company. I don't care if you are selling Benya Mangoro. If you go and see her, uh, this woman, this woman, this big woman here that she has Ras Powers Limited. She has one arrow that can fly, fly first class. Go and say she's packaging arrow and she's selling. Any business can become a $1 billion company. You see, it's your baby. You can package it, ramshack, do whatever you want with it. An investor will love it and give you money. If you, are, you, are, you are the decision maker of it. Don't make them love you. Don't make them enjoy you. Did, did, did you guys watch that video of... Uh, of, of that Cameroonian who, who, who was able to raise $600,000 for selling Jell of Rice. Did you see how he packaged Jell of Rice? Eh, Madame uh, uh, Rayeran, you should raise $1 million selling from, from, uh, from, from selling Eroda enters first class play. Right? <laughs> it's possible. It's very, see, there's money out there, guys. When I see people playing with money like that, is this almost, I was talking to one man, I said, Try, but I have like $10 million. I just need ideas I can trust. They do, people are just looking for ideas they can trust. The point is, are you ready to do the work? Are you ready to be meticulous? Very meticulous. Detail by detail. 
from report writing to making sure your internal operation. See, you don't need to be, you don't need to show that you are big, you have arrived. No, just do your best where you are. And it, an investor, see, investors just need who they can trust and who is credible. Simple. That's all they are looking for. If you want to show that you have made it, then you don't need an investor. Investors are looking for guys who have made it. They're looking for guys to bet on them. They're looking for serious people who are credible and are willing to go the extra mile. Just go and do these things I have shown you. Go and do them. And be ready. And you'll see how doors open for you. And let me tell you, one of the best ways to travel international also to investors. An investor can pay your flight any time to come see them in their country or recommend you or recommend you to go to meetings, to go to conferences, to perfect you. Uh, this is one thing I try to avoid. Uh, investors don't care about written projects. That's more. Or are these written projects about your business are running right now? Mm -hmm. So I've always said what written projects. Investors don't like that. They like it, use a different way to tell them, this is what we're, I am doing this right now. And with your money, I need to be here. Come, let us partner and let us be here. Investors don't like that thing, that return projects. Is, is, it a, is it an operating business? And what do you need to do with the next, to launch to your next level? What do you need to scale? So better, if, if you're talking about project that you need to scale, yeah, what you're doing right now is better. So yes, you're talking about, I already have things that I need to do so I can scale my business. All I need now is money. Then do the pitch deck for that, do the reporting, do the one page and all of that, and then you're good to go. Okay, good. All right, so that is it, people. I'm sharing in the group now some eight. Uh, sometimes you may not be raising money right now. Just visit those websites of those investors, okay? Visit the website. Go and read about them. Read about them because you 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 you, you apply better. You 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 connect with investors better when you know them. Okay, so go on those website. I have shared it in the group already. Go on the website, all right, and read about the investors. Some of most websites have what they are looking for. In mo in some of those websites, you see where they have indicated dedicated emails where you can send your pitch there. You can copy those emails and keep. For some website, you see a platform where you need to upload your pitch deck so they can now decide to call you or send you a follow-up email to work with you. Whatever you want to do, feel free to do that. But before you take a step to send an investor that email, make sure you're ready on your part. They use the word funding ready. Make sure you are ready. And then I'll end with this. I always like people to try to raise money on their own before they come to me. So go on, I'll go and use all these tactics, but I can guarantee you that if you do it well, you'll be able to initiate investment discussions even without me, successfully, and even succeed, even raise to get investors to give you money without even me talking to you, talking to anybody, okay? But if you have done all of that and it's not going, always get back to me. Okay, and we'll see what you're what you're getting wrong, and we'll reach out to some people if need be and do that. Okay, but you will now see that if we use some of these tips, where to raise money is not a challenge. I will say it again: the biggest challenge of my experience is many people don't know how to be investment ready. Okay, right? Yes, questions. Uh, Winston is asking, does a business need legalization to get invested? Definitely. You can never raise investment without legalization. You can operate without legalization, but when you want to raise investment, please, you need to legally be registered as a limited liability company, preferably. That's an LTD. When you want to bring external parties, you need to be legal. Yes, Desmond, go ahead. Okay, Doc, thank you. Um, maybe what I wrote it was not, what I, what I wanted to do is, um, I have a project which is aimed at 
distributing free uh, sanitary, it's called safe sanitary practice, which is the aim is to distribute sanitary napkins to um, displace women living in the bushes because having visited some of the camps, I realized that most of them use very, very uh, unhygienic things for, for as their sanitary napkins. So like I said, I have two projects I've written. I don't know if, well, it, it just, if, it, if there is funding to actually uh, push through with, 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 should I say with the idea of the project? Well, is, I have two projects. Uh, is it going to make is it going to make money no no I, i'm not a specialist in that one <laughs> okay i don't do i don't do donations i don't do grants but what you can do is try to use you can use google and search for there are so many ngos in europe and america that fund similar kind of projects you can just search for them and see uh um you know just, just search for ngos and foundations funding uh, reproductive health or sanitary napkin projects in Africa. You see a lot of suggestions that you can use. Okay, then. thank you. Awesome. Yes, I see more hands up. Go ahead as we run up. Okay, Doug, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask, though, is it, um, it might sound in too funny or stupid, but is it every um, NGO? Um, wait, wait, let me reframe it and stop for my question. Does every NGO need just um, the donating um, way of making money or some of them make money? Some NGOs actually have money, make money through what they do. Yeah, that's what they call social enterprise now. That's what they call social enterprise. Okay. That's what they call let, social let, enterprise. Let's say, let's say like what this one is talking about. This one can decide to, let's say, if he can raise money and decide to go to the production of sanitary uh, uh, materials. While he's, he can decide, I know what, we'll be selling 80% of what we're producing and we'll be giving out 20% of what we're producing for free to IDPs. That's a share enterprise. What they're giving for free, they're using profit on what they're selling to finance what they're giving out for free. So social enterprise is to make money from what you're doing, but the money is not for profit. The money is for you to reinvest back into the community. Or the money is for you to cover just cost of what you're producing and then give back to the community at a cheaper price or for free. Okay, Doug, thank you. Yes. Like, like, like for example, like, most most mission hospitals, they always say normally their model is social enterprise. Normally their model is social enterprise, where um, whatever they are charging as hospital bills and all of that is supposed to be affordable because what they are charging is so they can use the money they are charging, buy more drugs, pay staff, maintain the cost, and still provide affordable health care to the community. That's so that's a social enterprise. Okay. Again, so please make sure that you create time and work on these things, sort them out. When you are funding ready, you can always get funding. Trust me, you can always get funding. But you need to make sure that you are funding ready on your end and we'll make sure that every other thing can be successful. So stretch yourself, do what you can do. And always remember, I always say this, please, any startup that you have, as long as you believe in it, and as long as you know that there is an available market for the problem you're solving, I wanna guarantee you that startup has a future. Okay, yes. and sometimes many people get to struggle in business because they, they doubt their own self and they doubt the beautiful business that they have to build. And always see your business long-term. Avoid this um, habit of 
concluding on your business that is still very young. I always say that, and that's from research anyway, an observation. A business can only be considered dead, like it cannot work. If like after four years of consistently building that business and improving strategy, improving everything is still a failure, then you can start thinking of changing to a different business or abandoning business totally. But as long as you have not clocked four years of consistent building strategy, improvement, aggressive marketing, product improvement, oh, you are doing everything that you can do, that business has not failed. It is still a good business that can go places. Okay? All right, guys. Take care. Keep building the dream. For very soon, it's going to materialize. Okay? All right. Have a great time. Let's keep the conversation in the group. Cheers. Thank you so much.